VCR party. I'm Joe. That's Nick. That's Steve. That's George. And we are watching VHS tapes. That's what we do with our lives. Uh, I'm in the office. We have 11,000 VHS tapes here. And uh, we, we, you got some new ones, right, Nick? Yeah, there's a few that arrived. Um, uh, this is uh, Kids in Character. So you know how uh, we've shown, um, what was it, uh, where like Alf and the Chipmunks uh, and the Muppet Babies all team up to tell kids not to do drugs? Right. Like it was yeah, a yeah. big, it was like the but, multiverse before the multiverse. Was you it know? the cartoon uh, All Stars? All Stars like to the rescue. Yeah. This appears to be something similar, but it's like uh, the magic. It's like PBS star Sherry Lewis, um, Magic School Bus, Gullah Gullah Island, Barney and Babar, and Tom Selleck up here Ooh. are all yeah. Cele so this celebrity one, bullshit fodder right there. I I think it might be. Yeah. Uh, it won't be a quiz, but that looks pretty good. And then this is um, hip hop dance. And uh, we're talking about the kid and play two step during the uh, cartoon episode we watched on Saturday morning cartoons. This has a dance called the Alf. So I'm excited to see. I didn't. That was one dance that you'd think would have been on my radar in the 80s, but I don't know. I don't know how to do the Alf, but I'm going to learn how to. Because with, nobody uh, else did it dance. except nobody else did it except for people in that video. But now, can <laughs> Nick, you work on this? Can you? work on the dance and then present it to us and do it in a really serious way with like a really serious expression on your face. No joking or anything. Sure. Yeah, I can do that. Yep. Will you really? Are you serious? Are you be joking right we'll, now? We'll see how much we'll see. I, I'm ambitiously saying yes now, but we know how that goes. <laughs> so we're still waiting on the ventriloquism from uh, the yeah. start of uh I, yeah, I, I, get, I get kind of distracted on these big plans I've got. So yeah, well, like I the don't clown know if museum, happen. The clown museum follow-ups took like three and a half years to for you to follow up finally on that so um have yeah, you that, heard anything that was my fault no the elderly <laughs> volunteers who volunteer their time in that small town have not returned my calls but okay. i do i did find out that there's a they're having their annual clown days festival june 4th through the 6th and i've been uh, imploring any melinda's who live in nebraska to drive there and get some answers about why vcr party doesn't have its own shelf at the clown doll museum i thought you were going to say you were going to book a flight to go there so that you get some answers. Uh, let's I not thought, go that far. Okay. No, right. you're not that committed to this bit. No. Okay. No. I um, think uh, most people don't even know what we're talking about right now. It's <laughs> fine. But at least we're having to the show. At least we're having a good time. Uh, let's yeah. get to a found footage festival classic. You caught me with my pants down, but no one sells carpet or waterbeds for less. Well, uh, spring has sprung. And um, what do you think of when you think of uh, spring in the air? Steve, uh, George, what do you think of? Movie pitches. No. <laughs> uh, I was going to say doinking. Isn't like do spring the time of doinking? Uh, I'm going to go with flowers. Oh. Good. Steve got it right. Yep. <laughs> flowers. Flowers are in bloom. I, I'm also right, though. I'm also right. Like uh, animals doink, like everybody doinks in spring. So anyway, right. continue on. Science and nature. Uh, science and nature well, together at last. This is actual man now. All right. This uh, this one is a uh, video that we got from David Cross uh, back in the day. He gave us a big reel of like 
tape traded videos. So, you know, in the 90s, David and like the Mr. Show people and some people from The Onion, they would, you know, you'd all trade videos of weird footage they would find. And this one was a guy in Arizona named DR Live who made a, a pitch for a movie he was going to make. This was actually from 1997. So it was later than I thought. But, uh, you know, instead of just telling somebody what a movie is going to be, he put together a pretty ambitious pitch reel. And uh, here's a, a, some highlights from this 15-minute uh, reel. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your heads and get ready to experience the cosmic rock and roll picture show flower. As God looks into the splendor of a sunflower in bloom, we see her emanate a magical glow with a feeling of warm, tender love. The sky starts to light up with stars to the music from Smoke on the Water. Dun, 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 da, dun, da, dun, 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 dun. I guess say the music licensing budget alone already puts this well over. Oh, oh yeah. Like A twenty four can't green light this even and, if it wants to. And the flags we're gonna get on this episode too. Everybody's watching a commercial for this one. Yeah. We follow some spirits as they fly over a meadow and then suddenly screech to a halt to watch a young couple making love in the tall green grass. Springtime and stops at six months to play yep. its umbilical chord as a guitar. <laughs> The music ends, end. and we hear a radio news flash, which updates us on the latest number of casualties in the Vietnam War, followed by a Pepsi commercial of the era. You got a lot to live, and Pepsi has a lot to give. An Indian medicine man comes out of the middle of the band playing his spear as if it were an electric guitar. He really likes that. He really Elias. likes the running bit of people playing things as electric guitars that aren't electric guitars. I like it, too. I'm, I'm for it's, it, yeah. So so far, this is green-lighted. I'm green lighted. Okay. So, yeah. All right. This is now a repentant Vietnam vet who looks like and is called Uncle Sam. David's spirit comes out of his body and is shackled by a bitch demon who comes out of Goliath. A jealous demon gets on stage and plays his pitchfork as if it were an electric guitar. And he sings, The George Thorogood fan, I guess. All I may do. David shoots a light beam out of his staff and blows the demons and Hitler into the lava pits. They become a star. Boom. And as they become a star, the angels in heaven sing. They sing another licensed song. <laughs> now the camera zooms back into the sunflower and turns 180 degrees to see God's face and keeps pulling back until her face becomes the happy, smiley face of the early 70s. And uh, by the way, did you get the meaning to the title, Flower Power? Think about it. It's that one. So that's Flower Power, DR Live's pitch from uh, the late 90s. Movie no. has not been made as of yet. Well, you remember, like, probably like episode 34 of VCR Party. In our first year, we played that video, and then there's mm -hmm. a phone number that pops up, and I called it. Do you remember this? And uh, I yeah. talked to um, his wife. His they live wife. in Arizona. Yeah, I talked to his wife. He was still at work, and I said, Has he made the movie yet? She's like, No, but he's retiring soon, and he still wants to make it after he retires. So, you know what? Like, Maybe we should uh, see Melinda's if we can fund presents. this. Yeah, Melinda's presents Flower Power. Maybe we should. I'll call him back up. We haven't. Uh, we haven't called. I him think for it's a while. worth doing. Now that we have a couple of movies under our belt, we got uh, A Life on the Farm, the documentary about the weird VHS tape from England, um, and we got uh, the Chop and Steel movie coming out next exactly. month. And, uh, exactly. Exactly. This could be the next thing. I think so. Let's. Uh, George, do you want to uh, lead the charge on that? Uh, on calling him up. Sure. Okay. Sure. Did you want me to call the licensing companies too, or is that no, would no, that no, be like no, a no, later? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. No, no that's uh, George. You're no. also responsible for coming up with versions of the songs that sound just enough like it not to get flagged. So that's, and I, ha uh, I have to play other things instead of electric guitars on the tracks as well. Is that correct? Yep. Like, yep. You got to come up with uh, something else. And yep. you'll okay. also play the fetus. <laughs> <laughs> you mean play the fetus or play the fetus? Both. Uh, <laughs> Play the I'll be a fetus, play fetus playing myself. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. All right. As if it were an electrical guitar. Right. Yeah. Fetus played by George. Uh, all right. We got a we got a project. I'm excited. Yeah. Let's call him back up. Um, all right. Let's uh you want oh, I got some great celebrity bullshit here. All right. 
This is uh, some celebrity bullshit that uh, Michael sent. It's a TV guide commercial from 1988. And um, here's, here's what the quiz is going to be. You guys have to guess one of the celebrities that's in. There's a shitload of celebrities in this, in this commercial. You just have to name one. What do you guys think? Okay, I, I've seen this. So I'm going to recuse myself from it. Um, You're going to recruise yourself? Recruise <laughs> yourself? I've never heard <laughs> I, of that I, word. I said what I meant. I'm going to recruise myself. <laughs> okay. You guys are recruiting or no? No, I, I'm going to say Delta Burke. Oh, good one. Good one. Did, did you give us any clues that I missed? No, it's just any celebrity in 1988. They're probably in this commercial. Kirk Cameron. There we go. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> All right, here we go. This week it's celebrity bullshit. Oh, these are the wraparounds. Uh, in, well, these wrap around that commercial. So this is pretty cool. Look what's happening tonight on Channel 7, Buffalo. Bryce Beckham. Wait, wait. I, don't, I want you to hear that song. Don't, please don't step on it, George. Thank you. All right, here we go. Channel 7, Buffalo. You were saying? What were you saying, George? Bryce Beckham. He was oh. on Mr. Belvedere. <laughs> it was going to be a big night. Okay. It, it was important I, I, I say that. Uh, <laughs> Kirk Cameron was in growing pains. They were already, I already feel like I won. In a way. You, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we'll see. Will they or won't they? Is TV getting too hot for families to handle? How far will it go? Don't miss this revealing investigation in TV Guide. Next, read about the real-life anguish that drove Judith Light to smash a window playing the mother of a boy with AIDS. Then, J. Fred Muggs tells you which stars made monkeys of themselves. Find out why Morton Downey Jr., Robin Gibbons, Brian Gebel, Jane Fonda, and Araldo Rivera won the awards no one wants to win. Plus, primetime grids and complete movie coverage. Pick up your TV Guide today. And then wait, there's one more commercial after this. Rick Azar, expect the best of Eyewitness News. <laughs> I like how he looks at the camera. <laughs> uh, all right, so that's our uh, this week in celebrity bullshit. Um, I think Steve got the closest to getting it right because of Kirk Cameron growing pains. Bill Burke is related to Morton Downey Jr. So For real? No. Oh. See, I, sometimes I believe things that you say. Joe, Joe I do I get to, do I get to reveal my background now? Um, yes. That we uh, now that I won that. Yeah, looks like Osaka's back. Osaka is back. The nice. wonderful uh, John uh, Kafiro. Um, they have a new record coming out. New Osaka pop star record called Ear Candy will be available uh, everywhere. It's available everywhere now, and they have an animated music video with a single, um, which actor comedian Fred Armisen is in an animated form. Um, as well as the band and John. Uh, it features the Osaka pop star Devil Dogs, Sweet Candy Vigilante, which is a new comic they have coming out. So I think that's the woman behind me. Um, yeah. It's a nod to the Partridge family, the Archies, the Monkeys. Uh, John and Osaka pop star have been an amazing um, supporter of the show. So please, please check them out. And please uh, go to osakapopstar.com. I think it's behind me. I didn't do a very good job of placing it. Uh, for more information to order and to see the new animated video. Um, yeah, and I don't know if we've gotten it yet, but they've say, uh, sent four copies to us. So we have the CD en route to the found footage office. So I'll look oh, forward nice. to that. Oh, nice. Right. I saw a package with that a return address. So we'll, we will unbox it eventually. But uh, yeah, awesome. love Osaka Popstar. Thanks for sending in those. CDs and I want to check out the animated video with Fred Armisen in it. That oh, sounds for sure. I think, I think it sounds really cool. And there's one more thing I, I wanted to just uh, uh, sell off to. It's Sweet Candy Vigilante, which um, is created by New York native Suzanne Cafafiro, and it's a comic book. So uh, they'll be released by monthly in comic strips, both physically and dig digitally. So I'm looking forward to checking that out when it arrives. When, and where can you get that? Uh, everything just go to Osaka Popstar. It's all there. Uh, com. Yep. One stop shopping. Nice. That's it. We're making it nice cool. and easy. Check all it right. Out. Support the Melinda's that support us. Goddamn right. Yes. All right. It's time for this week in Flying Windows. We have a Patreon. If you want to support this show and everything we do here at BCR Party and Found Footage Festival, you can. Uh, Sign up at patreon.com slash found footage festival and you get a bunch of bonus stuff. We started doing an unboxing show this month um, where we we get a ton of packages in the mail. I, I think uh, this usually, Saturday is this set. No, this I think this Sunday we should we should premiere the first episode of the unboxing. OK, VHS yeah. unboxing. We still don't have a title for it, but uh, I think we should compete against 60 minutes 
and see oh, how perfect. we can do. Yeah, okay, I think we go great. up against 60 minutes every single week. All right. Well, let's see how we do in ratings. The, uh, we do get a lot of really exciting stuff in the office, so you get to uh, see it as we see it, and uh, that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, we also do a bonus episode every week for patrons where we um, – an additional bonus episode where we watch like full videos and the one we're watching um this week is uh how to get revenge with linda blair starring the exorcist and one thing we noticed while while watching the entire video was that there are a lot of flying windows and whoever was on the um the duty to uh you know the editor who made the windows fly they got cute they got pretty cute with it so, there are uh, some really creative flying windows yes. i'd never seen them like this like they're flying into th- well you'll see let's play it yeah Yep, this is uh, every flying window in How to Get Revenge with Linda Blair. I was just reading a few pages from a fascinating you see, book. See, see that? that? Right off the bat. Look at that. It's going, it's going right into... Slow motion. I was just reading a few pages. See? It's yeah, look going at that. right into her book. It's almost becoming a bookmark. Oh, it is in a way. Yeah. And uh, you'll see a lot of that style. George and Steve don't look that impressed. I think we're... <laughs> So well, was it, is more. it a bookmark or has it become part of the book? It's almost like a comic book going in, become part of the frame. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Good I was question. trying to just, is it two pages or one page that it becomes? That's my Ooh. question. But I am blown away. I, I okay, good. Like Dave Bowman at the end of 2001, I, I just okay. overwhelmed. Got it. You're going to become a giant space baby. It's got it's a fascinating book. You will also discover invaluable techniques of about. retribution. Let's face it. Revenge. Look at that. And she goes in front of her head. That's pretty good, actually. Linda I, bet that was, like, I don't know how to do I that. I bet that wasn't that easy back then. Or, or is yeah. she in front of a green screen? Maybe she's in front of a green screen right now. Maybe. This is 1989. That's a pretty good flying window. That's there, a pretty probably. good. That revenge can be sweet. Well, you've made your clean exit. Fasten your seatbelts. That many of us can relate to. <laughs> Look at that one. It's just kind of creeped out. Yep. <laughs> kind of creeped out. Yep. Between yep. the books. There it is. Yeah. With anyone. And then, oh, that one goes back. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, where they store them on the shelf of the books. Yeah, they, yeah, they store all the windows back there. Confidence. Wherever uh, there's love out of the romance, wood panel. there's also pain and deceit. I've been having some problems with my next door neighbor. And in a couple of minutes, they're going to think they're living in Newark. <laughs> I like a window that comes out of a out of a central air conditioner. <laughs> that's the first time we've ever seen that one. That's a new category, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a little flip. I mean, that's a new category. Oh, oh back up on the shelf. But, but why so was that ordered all it. of a sudden? I don't know. I it, Yeah, it found it. it like grew a red border and then became part of the bookshelf. What the hell is going on here? What were they smoking over there? <laughs> so there you have it. <laughs> some wild, some mm. wild flying windows from Linda Blair and Company. Those are, I would say they were revolutionary. You know, I feel like, because that was early. That was an early video, wasn't it? What the year was that, 88? 89, so it's probably 89. Oh, okay. 80. Yeah. All right, all right. So, um, yeah, that was when Batman came out. And so, yeah, they were advancing a lot of technologies there, including yeah. uh, flying window tech. Mm-hmm. Um, what else we got here? Um, oh, we got shows coming up this week. Uh, Woodstock on Saturday. This Saturday, we're in Woodstock. What's that? Tinker Theater? Oh, it's pretty cool. I don't Tinker think... Street Cinema, yeah. Tinker Street, Tinker Street Cinema is what it's Street. called. Street. Um, cinema. Yeah, that's on Saturday night. Mm-hmm. That'll be fun. Um, what else we got? Um, oh, Brooklyn next week. We're playing Nighthawk uh, on next Wednesday, is it? A week from yep, yep. tomorrow. Next Wednesday night. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and also, we're in the Tribeca Film Festival, our documentary Chop and Steal. Uh, it's June 10th, and there's a few dates, but like I think tickets are still available. You can buy tickets for that. It'll be cool. We'll probably be there. We'll be there for June 10th for sure. Yeah, yeah, and I think the Q and A on the Saturday screening, and there's one on the 18th too. So yeah, go to Tribeca Film Festival website and come see the world premiere of the movie about our news appearances and found footage festival and everything we do. So, uh, and there'll be some. I think there's even going to be some celebrities in attendance for that one. Can you imagine if like I, I don't think Robert De Niro personally watches every movie uh, that's in his film festival anymore, but can you imagine if he's like in the audience for that? Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Do you think there's um, any chance he will be? 
No, there's not a goddamn chance. He doesn't. He goes to like the cool, like he only goes to like gangster movies, right? Yeah. You don't think he'll like care about it? Be like, oh, is that kind of like RLM or what? Uh, <laughs> uh, like, a... I like oh, these so... guys. They they seem like everything is terrible. They seem, you know, I like those guys. Yeah, they seem pretty good. <laughs> not as good as those guys, but they seem all right. <laughs> oh boy, I hope so. I That's know. exactly yeah. what he'll say. So that uh, could happen. We'll find out. It could happen. Let's rock some ravs. You want to rock some ravs? Come on, let's see your raviolis. Show us 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 your raviolis. Rav short for raviolis, which of course makes sense because when we show us raviolis, that means show us the new videos we found this week. Just exactly. For, just tuning in for the first time. Yeah. Uh huh. I like that uh, you're you... always very caring for the new people who are who are still what they they left a long time ago. I want you this to be a welcoming I place. I do Come too. On in. But like, it's hard to talk sometimes if you always have to stop yourself <laughs> and say, "Okay, this is from stairway to stardom." And we did that. But, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know you don't like your job, <laughs> but uh, uh, I don't like doing part... that part of my job. <laughs> part of the yeah. gig. I, you know, I look um, to you to do that. You're the guy who does that. Yeah, I'm the guy that does the job that you don't want to do. Exactly. Okay, exactly. Got, got it. George is newly single, and uh, we've been, uh, Joe had a great idea, which is to show videos on, uh, that would encapsulate some dating advice. We're stage people who have advice. We've, we've uh, treaded the boards. Is that the right uh, expression? Um, we've treaded the boards when it comes to dating, and we're treaded here to impart, impart our wisdom. I believe it's uh, an acting term, but... Uh, I've got a I've got a clip that I think well, will go a long way. Hold on a second. First of all, okay. So uh, can can I go first because I have the graphic yeah. that comes up. First. Oh sure. Go yeah, ahead. I have one, and uh, let me, yeah, I have the graphic. And uh, but George, I want to ask you first: Have you gone on any dates since we announced your singleness uh, from last week? No, I I think I mentioned that I got off Bumble, and I'm I'm uh, I, I I realized oh. that that the the only thing sadder than being single would be talking about it on youtube <laughs> well we'll do all the talking well, for you you don't have to say a word i'm sure you'll have some get questions used to it, for me george because this, this is going to be a, at least a year of segments so uh get comfortable even once you're like happily married and have a couple kids we'll still be doing this segment <laughs> I, um, I think we should open it up for people to send in it. info at found footage if you have someone perfect for george just oh, send in their qualifications yeah it's, it's gonna be alf rebney i know <laughs> so uh it's gonna be 50 alf rebney joe can go through it <laughs> Um, all right, let's roll the uh, opening graphic of uh, dating advice for George. Fly into a Okay, all right. This one comes from a video called, so George, here's the thing about dating. And I have no, absolutely no experience. Like I've been on like four dates. I've been like married forever. So, so um, you've, treaded, you've treaded the boards, so to speak. I've treaded uh, the boards, as, the, as okay. a wise man once said. Those aren't boards, but don't <laughs> stop treading. So <laughs> hey here's one thing. You need to look good, okay, uh -oh. in order to start Shit. dating. So we have these videos called Style on Video. Have you seen these before? We have a, a bunch <laughs> mm -hmm. of them. Styles on Video. And there, it's, uh, who put it out? Glamour Shots put it out. And it's videos of like your head with somebody else with like a, a hairstyle on it. And then you like watch it. You're like, oh, that's the hairstyle that I want. And then they try take before your or you buy. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I, I thought I would play this video. You can look at some of the hairstyles and see if uh, some of them, which one is right for you. Okay. So that's pretend that guy's you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no. Double yes. That was that was the Stuart Smalley, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm good enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need more hair. Higher. Mm. What do you think about the scratch the scratch scratches in there? The <laughs> wicka wicka wicka. Should this be a Melinda mix? Can Melinda do something with this mix? I don't know. Let's hear it. <laughs> so, what? That last one. I mean, it, it, it's that they take off part of his act. They like, yeah, they do have to post lobotomy. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. That looks good. That's, that's what I want. 
that Anderson, our lawyer? <laughs> yeah, I think it might be. Oh, do you hear those big, big drums? <laughs> yeah, George? That, these all look like, like statue hair on the statue, especially the last one. Looked like it had been carved in marble. <laughs> Not in a bad way. I, think so. bad, I want. I want to look like Valerian or one of the one of the ancient Roman emperors. <laughs> I thought this was like the news anchor tape. Like everyone, every house style is like a news anchor. Different. Oh, yeah. it is a different yeah. news anchor. Yeah. <laughs> Roman mall. These ads oh. in the middle of it. Yeah. Well, Nick, will you call them? You think that glamour shots in the perimeter mall uh. still around? <laughs> <laughs> I somehow doubt it. So there it is. It's how it ends. I feel like they're always just hitting the fill button. The fill button on the Casio. <laughs> uh, all right. I think it's time. already been remixed. Yeah. So that's all of them. So, George, it seemed like the one that you were most interested in was that one. Yeah. So. That's- yeah, yeah, that was the one that you liked the best, right? Mm-hmm. And thought would right. fit on your head the best. So the Rand I, Paul, yeah, the Rand Paul. <laughs> so I only have <laughs> I only have one photo of you, and it's from George's deathbed visions. And so I, I plopped that mm-hmm. on top of the George's deathbed vision. And what do you think? I don't know. I think it's <laughs> it, it works. <laughs> it, it works. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do. All right. <laughs> well, this just head exactly down to Perimeter Mall and, and ask for the Rand Paul. And, and it's, it, I think it's exactly as, gonna be. as dignified as I expected it to be. But really, anything is better than an elderly incel or whatever I've got going on right now. <laughs> well, but wait, there's more. There's more oh. dating advice for you. All right. Yeah, this is oh. a video. Our uh, helpful. Our, our viewer, Wayne, sent this in. This is a half-hour infomercial. This guy would buy ad space to sell some sort of 900 number, but it, it wasn't straight like a porn number, I don't think. Mm. But he'd be in a dance club, and um, some singles there would introduce themselves, and you could talk to real single people on this. I like that you, you just call pay. them singles. You refer to them as singles. <laughs> some singles would be there. <laughs> Everything like, I know about dating I learned from 80s dating shows. So, yeah, that's why I call singles? them singles. All right. So yeah, if you're looking for a co-ed, you would uh, <laughs> call this video and try to uh, woo a single. Okay. Or craft right. cheese. Also available single. These are the same people you see in the club, the bar, but you're too chicken to talk to. But now you can't talk when you go to the phone and call. No one's gonna hang up on you. No one's gonna reject you. You will never get rejected when you go to the phone. Rejection is the worst feeling in the world. Who needs it? So get off the couch, get out of bed, go to the phone and call a number. Hi, I'm April. I'm wild and spontaneous. And if you're that type of guy, why don't you give me a call? Hi, my name is Tanya. My, I'm 21 years old. I'm looking for a guy who's sensitive, pathetic, and fun to be with. <laughs> I hear sensitive, pathetic, and fun to be with. <laughs> yeah. That's why George I took her number down. Yeah. <laughs> you. That could be you. So, so is that supposed to be authentic? I, okay, or maybe empathetic? It's hard to tell. Okay, let's listen. Hi, my name is Tanya. My, I'm 21 years old. I'm looking for a guy who's sensitive, athletic, and fun to be with. Athletic? Oh, athletic. Oh, that's what I think oh. it is. Athletic. Yeah. Is that it? Pass. Athletic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pathetic shoes on my list, but no. Next. Yeah, all right. Hi, my name is Adrian. I'm 25. I'm looking for a guy, tall, dark hair, green eyes, and exciting to be with. Yo, Adrian. I'm looking for a... <laughs> I think to be with. I'm looking for a sophisticated professional who drives a fast car and knows how to romance a woman. Hi, I'm Victoria and I'm 23 years old. Hi, I'm Tiffany and I'm 22. And we like to double date. We're looking for a couple of sweet, sensitive, fun-loving guys who like to dance and show a girl a good time, but also like those quiet, romantic evenings at home. Then we We don't don't double. Hi, my name is Ashley. I like taking steamy hot showers by candlelight. I'm looking for a European man. Wait, I thought it was baths by candlelight. Like, yeah. How are you even going to see the candles if you're in the shower? <laughs> well, and plus I feel like the shower would put the candle out. Like if you had it oh, in there. Oh, if it's in there, yeah. The candle well, is in, in, it's outside of the shower. But would oh, you, I mean, how do you see it? Well, George, you haven't done this. I have done this alone. 
but if you you have a you know if you don't have a um if you have a clear sh shower liner oh i will, see a clear yeah. shower liner right? yeah uh, you gotta plan ahead or if uh, you're like having if you're in england where they don't believe in shower curtains you could you could have one there too i guess see it mm. but all right hi my name is ashley i like taking steamy hot showers by candlelight i'm looking for a european man who's outgoing spontaneous and who will perform George, would you consider yourself European? I mean, Greek uh, is genetically. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm two generations <laughs> removed. I think that's what she meant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do have an accent. All right. Uh, who's all right, genetically get your European? Out. I'm looking for a man who's genetically. Your clear... <laughs> <laughs> get your candle and your clear shower liner and meet me at the bathroom. <laughs> all right. Hi, I'm Leslie. I'm 22 years old, and I'm looking for a hot Italian who loves to drink tequila all through the night. Greek I'm Italian. Italian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that swimsuit! You can meet. You can meet that. Joe, that matches your robe, I think. Those I know. Are, uh... You know, I'm starting to think maybe she's my soulmate. She might be. Yeah, tell your wife. I mean, I, I'm gonna call her up show after her the this. video and be like, "Hey, <laughs> sorry, I met I met Jennifer." You could also just buy Albertina a uh, Budweiser bathing suit. There, that would be oh, easier. Actually, go. that'd be yeah, easier. That'd be yeah. yeah, she'd yeah. love it. She'd love yeah. it. Oh, she would totally wear that. As, uh, cookies? I can learn how to bake a cookie. <laughs> All right. These guys, uh, these guys are, are who seeking knows, women. So that, who who yeah. knows how to cook a power bar? <laughs> <laughs> so a litter car, because I love power bars. Um, all right. Now, these guys probably aren't uh, your type, George, but I included them anyway. Hi, that's Ralph. Hi, this is Roger. Ralph's 29. Roger's 25. We're looking for Warren. Warm, sumptuous, attractive ladies that are willing to spend romantic <laughs> evening. I'm sorry. They were supposed to say it simultaneously at the end, and they just Ooh. they couldn't do it. Yeah. Um, and I think he he uh, he has a flub too, and he does not. He telegraphs that he flubs too. He just goes does one of these. Yeah, the other guy looks at him when he does the flub. Hi, this is Roger. Yeah, Rob's very conspicuous. Roger's twenty-five. We're looking for Warren. Warm, sumptuous, attractive ladies that are willing to spend romantic evening with you. The preceding program is a paid advertisement for Dial a Date by BMW <laughs> Entertainment. For All right, home. George. So, my dating advice is to call Dial a Date and uh, try to get a, a date with one of those eligible singles. The incredible thing is, I've seen that because it was it's in my giant hard drive of 900 numbers, but I couldn't. That was a great cut. I couldn't find a way to cut it down to just a minute or two. Excellent oh, work. Well, thank but you. More George, importantly, good luck. More importantly, did you learn anything from it? Oh, I learned all sorts of things. I okay. need to get my hair cut, okay. and I need to I call nine hundred line. The, uh, shower. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no problem in that showers. department. So you really have done candlelight showers before. That's new information about George. I hasn't everybody? Candlelight showers? No, not at all. What? I just, I just. No. Take a shower to get to, I just, I, I just get out of there as quickly as possible. I'm not. I would spend all day in the shower if it were, <laughs> if it were acceptable. Well, you could say that in your one nine hundred number commercial. That's what we got to get right. Georgia one nine hundred number, and then all right, all so right. Let's you're looking up. for a European man who uh, <laughs> a genetically wait, a European man, <laughs> genetically European man who likes spending all day in the showers. Email info <laughs> at foundfootagefest.com. Um. All right. My turn. So um, no more. We're done with George dating now. We're on to a brand new corner. So mm. Nick and I, we, we've been talking about this corner for a while. Um, Nick, Nick, a lot of times whenever a video comes up and there's a man who looks a certain type, you will say, I bet it takes that man. On, uh, I bet that man probably spends a lot of time on the toilet. You'll make that comment frequently. You picture right? him like just taking a newspaper, rolling it up under his arm, and going into the bathroom, and then not hearing from him for a while. Right. We were doing an EP mode recently. I can't remember which one it was, but you you commented that somebody in 
the video looked like he spent a lot of time on the toilet. And then I thought, the Linda Blair tape, yeah. Oh, it's the Linda Blair tape. And then I thought, like, maybe there should be a montage of that. Maybe we can put together a montage. So in order to do that, let's let's start a new corner. Let's accumulate mm -hmm. some some guys who probably spent a lot of time in the corner, and we'll do it in this corner called men who likely spent a lot of time on the toilet. And I've made an opening graphic. <laughs> All right, there it is. <laughs> Dr. Schultz, of course. And he, uh, I mean, he admits that he spent the most time on the toilet. I don't think he does it anymore. Expert. Exactly. Yeah. So um, this is men who likely spend a lot of time on the toilet. And I found a Scimitar video. Uh, Scimitar was a production company in the 80s. They were huge. They shout out videos constantly. Um, their claim to fame was, uh, for us, is uh, how to have cyber sex or how to have cyber sex on the internet. Um, yeah. But anytime there was a new fad, they would always uh, shit out a new video. And this one is all about softball. So there's a lot of softball players, professional softball players, yeah, okay. who all look like they spent a lot of time on the toilet. Here we go. Oh, and by the way, this is the Scimitar opening logo. Look how cool that is. I think we got to do a t-shirt of this. I Don't agree. you think? And, and it's like yeah. an S on your chest, like a Superman S. And maybe we'll do like Superman colors, like a blue shirt with like red. I don't know. Or maybe we just do uh, silver on, on black. I don't know. I'm spitballing here. All right. Anyway, here we go. Yes, reports. Our first guest is... Bill Gaddy, powerful, relentless in the pursuit of perfection. A student of the game. He makes hitting look easy. Powerful, relentless. Uh, he spends yeah. up to he spends up to twenty eight minutes on the toilet every morning. <laughs> Rick Shear, physically gifted at six feet five and two hundred ninety pounds. Definitely. The crusher pretty much boils hitting down to practice. Do you think he's never ninety nine because he spends ninety nine minutes on the toilet? Oh yeah. Probably. He's physically gifted at uh, spending a lot of time on the toilet. Yep. Doug Brown, the whip, Doug Brown. a bright new star in slow pitch softball, explains his theory of the art of hitting. The art Dave of Elder, shitting. <laughs> for a change of pace, we'll hear how a pitcher tries to thwart the game's biggest sluggers. Uh -huh. Don Arndt, the oh, old yeah. master. Definitely, uh, the right? name says it all. <laughs> the old <Yeah>. master. <laughs> I'm spending a lot of time on the toilet. Are you yeah. seeing the sports page? <laughs> He, I mean, goes, it's like he goes in with morning. like he goes in with the full like Sunday Times like every oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, is the magazine out there, hun? <laughs> he definitely uses candles of the shower for sure. In the matter of slow pitch slugging, <laughs> here is the crusher's final word. Oh, you know why they call him the crusher, of course. I mean, <laughs> oh, so being the home run hitter. It just takes a lot of practice, and I think if, if the guy uses the ability he's got and gets his timing and stuff down and puts everything he's got into it, yeah, anybody uh, can be yeah, You could spend a lot of time in the bathroom. Maybe the 99 <laughs> is that his uh, turds weigh 99 pounds. Could that be it? Yeah, that's probably, that could be it, yeah. Because okay. everybody's number is, <laughs> yeah, has some kind of meaning. Behind their shitting, right? Okay. Puts right. his timing and stuff down and puts everything he's got into it. Yeah, anybody can be a home run hitter. There it is. All right. All right. What do, you think, what do you think about that corner? Well, I'd like that you have the graphic at the beginning and end, so it's like a double tapered um, <laughs> corner, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. Is that a George Brett reference there? It sure is. Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. I, get, I got a video that somebody sent in that I just loved the title. I can't even remember who sent this, but it was a couple of weeks ago I showed it. Hogan. Just Hogan. It was a dollar at a thrift store. And um, I was like, I got to watch this because it features the world's most talented pigs, bacon and pork chop. And it turns out this is a video about how to train your pigs. Pigs are smart animals. You can tell. Uh, here's how to train them. And uh, oh, man, I love I love this video so much. It's hogging. I always feel bad about eating bacon because the bacon is so goddamn good. But I feel bad about because pigs are so nice. I think anybody who watches this will not want to eat pigs again. Yeah, we'll see about that. Hogan presents Amazing Pig Tricks. <laughs> Starring Bacon and Pork Chop, the Happen and Hogs. Why well, name them after? Oh, hot diggity, hog diggity, boom, what you do to me? It's 
It's so new to me. What you do It looks like Marty. Yeah, I know. You sure he's not a pig? I think he is part pig. Oh, I like that. Yeah. This is a, a parody of uh, Perry Como's Play Dead. Hot, hot diggity dog diggity. Um, yeah, yeah, they even do this. Nick, we all knew this was a Perry Como song originally. We all knew that. You don't have, have to tell the new viewers that. <laughs> this is my grandpa would listen to this original song by Perry Como in, in the car, and I would always make him replay it because I loved it so much. <laughs> God, what a nerd! <laughs> Which Grandpa, version? Will you this play one the or Perry Como song again? <laughs> well, when you're listening to a Perry Como tape in the car, I mean, <laughs> when something comes up that has a bit of a novelty song sound to it, you're like, "Oh, do that one again," so I don't have to listen to the easy listening That's stuff. Cool. Is that senior year? <laughs> yeah, this is senior year of college, actually. Yeah. yeah. When I'm holding you, shake, sit. Hot diggity, hot diggity, boom, what you do to me from the moment you Wow, look at that. My cats can't even come close to doing that. Being able to handle your pig whenever and wherever you want versus whenever and wherever he wants helps put you in control. If he screams and fights, give him a treat. Never put your pig down because he's screaming. If you do, you're teaching him that he can control you. Leash Never training. put your pig down when he's screaming. Uh, <laughs> is this still part of the dating advice? <laughs> no, no. no. Oh, oh my. <laughs> this is, uh, no. Uh, uh. You. Leash training. Harnesses made especially for pigs are a lot easier to get on and off than dog harnesses. Listen to the dogs in the neighborhood going crazy. And also, it's probably Portland, right? That's got to be Portland. <laughs> I would, I, would right? guess. I think that's the only place where people have pet pigs. Well, this is Colorado, so... Oh, okay. Yeah. I can see Boulder. Franktown, Colorado, yeah. Okay. Then Suburban dog Boulder. harnesses. Yeah. Come on, Bacon. Bacon. Shoot a goal and play golf. Shoot. Encourage your pig to shoot the shoot. ball in the net by holding a treat behind All it. All the way. Shoot. All the Reward way. your pig that's through the back of the it. net. Otherwise, Practices otherwise the goal won't several count. sessions. <laughs> I mean, it right. wasn't already impressive. It was already impressive. We didn't have to go all the way. Sessions. In. Golf is taught in the same manner, but it will be more difficult oh, due to the smaller target. Because he doesn't have opposable thumbs. <laughs> Good luck from all of us at Hagen. <laughs> Good luck from all of us at Hagen. <laughs> what a ham! That's yeah, I mean, do we, have to, do we have to end uh, the show with good, good luck from all of us here at Hagen now? Is that? Oh, yes, we absolutely the, have to. The ever yeah. growing sign off video. I'm writing it down right now. Good luck from all of us at Hagen. Yeah, <laughs> it, we got to add that for this show yeah. for sure. Yeah, that's that's good stuff. I love that so, video so much. I'm going to I'm going to have a yeah. serious talk with my cats because they can't do jack squat. I try to yeah. teach them how to do stuff. They can't score goals. We have a video called How to Train Your, your um, Dog or Pot-Bellied Pig in Under Five Minutes. And um, I get it now because it's the same techniques you would use with a dog that you use with these pigs. And uh, I'm going to try some of these with Marty. I would, I would love to have a pet pig. I think it'd be fun. Except the, the hooves would probably be a problem, right? If you have like hardwood floors, wouldn't they like? Well, they keep growing. You know, even if you get a little, uh, you know, pygmy pig, I think they get pretty large, or they can anyway. George Clooney famously had a huge pet pig that just got enormous. Um, but I think it would be a pretty fun, uh, pretty fun pet. Yeah. Uh, and they do everything a dog does, basically. So, yeah. Um, all right. That's our raviolis. Shows your raviolis. Shows your raviolis. Shows your raviolis. All right. This is the moment that I have been waiting for for a very, very long time. It's show us your Plunkets. Jim Plunkett. Jim Plunkett. Jim Plunkett had never known failure until now. All right. We haven't done this since Quarantine Classics. This has been like, what, two years since we did this? 
been a while. It was, yeah, 2020, I believe. Yeah, like exactly. So, classics, yeah. so this is one thing that we did to entertain ourselves during like peak pandemic. We did quarantine classics. And, and one of the highlights was show us your plunkets where we would show terrible photos of ourselves. And the reason we call it show us your plunkets is because Steve there got a photo taken with Jim Plunkett. You can't see him, but he's a, was he the quarterback of the, was he the Patriots and the Raiders? And, Patriots, Raiders. Yeah. And you got in San Francisco. You got your photo taken with him. You were wearing your Carl Strauss head. You had a lanyard <laughs> on. Nope. I was very excited to have and, that photo taken. And then, uh, yeah. Well, and then the, the, the whole, out that's the way I look. Well, <laughs> the thing with, that we said is that you look like a thumb, like a oh, thumb yeah, wearing much. a hat. Like you look very thumb like, like yeah. if you put yeah. your thumb up right next to it, you, it looks exactly like you throw a Carl Strauss head on your thumb. It that, looks like Steve. That's why I grew the beard so, to, to throw the scent mm. off the thumb. Yeah, <laughs> good idea. There you go. Uh, all right, so these are plunkets. We're going to show some uh, some submissions that uh, some Melinda's have sent in and uh, some of our own. But first, do you remember how I would like rattle off the top three plunkets? Yeah, it was determined. Yeah, what our top plunkets were. Yeah, so, yeah. I was so, went very quickly, and uh... well, I, I'm going to show you the top three uh, from the last episode of uh, Quarantine okay. Classics. Well, not the last, but probably one of the last ones. Um, all right, so here's number three. That's the photo of me wearing the shithead hat. Then that got usurped by <laughs> that one. I don't remember anybody's name anymore, but uh, that one got usurped by, by Mike Druckers. Uh, yeah. th that one got usurped by, uh, oh, uh, Grubchild, yep. right? Yeah, yeah she Grubchild. called herself Grubchild. Yep, she, she called herself Grubchild. We did not call her Grubchild. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, then the Star Wars kid. Yeah. Yep, and then that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, these are all, all, all oh, sharing yeah. number three. Oh, these are yeah, yeah. these are not same sharing, but they've been usurped. Yeah, usurped, Us usurpation. Do you guys know mm -hmm. what usurp means? Yes. Okay, everybody knows what it means. Okay, mm -hmm. I like that he has the same expression as Kermit here. Um, oh yeah, the Sally's ex-boyfriend. <laughs> oh yeah, small wonder. There's Nick. Uh, that guy. <laughs> you know, that was Nick, and he didn't know it was Nick. I uh, did. Oh, coffee. I, yeah. Uh, no, yep, there's a Eric Wareheim character to be. <laughs> oh, then the, then we went 2.5. Um, nice. and then, uh, but was it the kid or was it the dad? It was the dad, the dad who wearing a, a Wambo, Wambo. Yeah. Wambo Elmer shirt. Fudd shirt. That's right. Oh, that was a trip down memory lane. And this is, oh, you uh, know what? I'm going to Medieval Times this Sunday. I should wear a Wambo shirt. Oh, you should. Yeah, you that. should. Yes. That's amazing. Okay. I thought you were going to say dress as a centaur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not, not wear a Wambo shirt. Yeah. We well, got a Wambo shirt. You got a hot date this weekend, Nick? Sounds uh, like it. I'll go to some uh, old co some coworkers. Oh, okay. The, uh, Kim's video project. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought they had a hot date. No, uh, not then. a hot date. There's 2.5. That that one got usurped. I think that was our current 2. No, no, this got usurped by this 2.5. Remember this classic? Yeah. And then you're that such a cutie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're such a cutie. <laughs> and Linda. He should be president of the United States of America. Should yeah. I? I mean, just for that, like, look at the shirt he's wearing. Like, and that's the same Budweiser bikini as in George's dial a date. Uh, or not bikini, is. but swimsuit. So that kid uh, has presidential similar. knees. <laughs> <He really does. laughs> oh boy. Okay. Uh, all right. And then uh, number two uh, was the Red Robin pick I took of Nick at uh, Red Robin. And uh -huh. then, oh, then that got usurped actually by this one of our <laughs> buddy Nick. Uh, that's his brother there with his dad who looks like Saddam Hussein, his mom and his bra and her bra. In the <laughs> Remember these? <laughs> oh, Brothers caught mid sneeze. Oh, I still think that should be number one. Yeah. It should be number one, but it's not because guess what? Number one point <laughs> of all time will never be topped. Steve is the thumb. There we go. That's that's your top three. Well, the the big news is that Steve uh, cleaned out his storage locker in Los Angeles. He was was living there part time, but no more. And he, he came across a huge treasure trove of plunket. So Steve, wait, wait, I wait. ask you, wait, wait, what? wait. Let let's hold it off. Let's let's like let's build it up. Oh, so okay. I have a couple plunkets to show. And then let's show the submissions. Then let's show Steve's plunkets at the end. Like let's get ourselves all fired oh, up for okay. it. Okay. Okay. Let me. Uh, <laughs> Let me um, show a couple plunkets that I have had since we did Quarantine Classics. This one is, this was taken like right in the heat of, of the pandemic, July 2020. 
And uh, I clearly hadn't shaved. I hadn't showered much. And my right breast was really large. And it's like shooting into the camera. So that's a, a <laughs> pandemic uh, uh, plunk of me. And then this one was taken last summer. And I think I look very thumb-like here, don't I? Mm -hmm. Like my my well, without uh, the beard, be one hundred percent thumb. Yeah, exactly. Thank God for that beard. But like the way that my hair is just like, it looks like a thumb, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. very thumb-like. So <laughs> yeah. those are those are my plunkets. Well, some viewers sent uh, sent them in. Where we've you know got a backlog of these. So let me just show some on here. Perfect. Okay. Total yeah. plunket. Total plunket. This is oh, a good man. one. Uh, this is uh, Chris S. He said, uh, this is from my time at Ohio Computer Camp as evidenced by my matching Ohio Computer Camp t-shirt and fanny pack. Uh, oh, it's, it's a laptop, giant laptop. Um, oh. and, I, want, uh, I want Jim Plunkett to be right next to him. This is also Chris said, continuing the theme of me unhappily posing with computers. <laughs> and he said he likes the juxtaposition of the festive Polaroid frame and how miserable he was in this. <laughs> but finally, he came across this photo. And this this is uh, Chris on the left. He's like, what is this pose? I recognize something about it next to something with red hair. And then he then he realized that it was close to George's picture. Yes. With Madeline. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes. Also looking miserable. That's very similar. Yeah. Okay. This is Dante. Uh, Dante with uh, their brother Nick was saying that uh, loves this picture. They recently moved to Marshall, Wisconsin from Atlanta in 1992. This is in the hallway outside their bedroom. I'm visibly sick, and we just had these iron on t shirts made at the mall. Neither of us are looking at the camera. So <laughs> is Dante on the left or right? You know? Uh, Dante's on the right, I believe. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. That's uh, good. Miserable. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 The, the dinosaur uh, right. looks happy. Yeah, yeah. The dinosaur is the, I guess, is the most flattering person yeah. in there. Yeah, person. Uh, this is Jay Nathan Couch, uh, whose mom made an ornament, unironically, out of a picture that's hung in their tree for 15 years. <laughs> and I believe we've we've shown that his plunket before, but this is in the ornament. I mean, it's so like there's so much yarn there too. Like that's an entire mm -hmm. ball of yarn right there. Like that's a must have taken weeks. Oh yeah. man, he's he's in he's safe. He's in good hands there. <laughs> Mark S said, "This is me at the house with friends. I've also <laughs> attached to, uh, Mark on the right because I also attached a Photoshop they made to make fun of me afterwards, which I always like. This is uh, this is classic uh, GQ Man of the Year. Mark is back. Love, sex, and madness issues." <laughs> I just love kudos it. to your friends that's fantastic great friends too i like those friends yeah. yeah jill and jill and matt sent this in it's of matt this is 2001 it's matt's <laughs> sister's high school graduation um Moment, moments before he was about jill, to vomit he was just about to this vomit is mid, this is mid cough oh, okay. so we've had mid sneeze this is mid cough <laughs> okay <laughs> so yes oh. you couldn't just retake <laughs> photos before you had digital uh all right, this is an unusual one. Rob said, I answered a vague Facebook ad, which resulted in me appearing on diners, drive-ins, and dives about a local restaurant. When it aired, I realized the angle wasn't very flattering at all. Yeah, it's so, thumb-like. It's thumb-like. Yeah. yeah, welcome to the Thumb Club. Welcome to yep. the Thumb Club. Yep. Immortalized on Guy Fieri's show. Yep. Uh, Verna sent this in, picking the nose. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yep. Is that, that Johnny you know, Ramon? Uh, maybe. <laughs> That's lightning know. in a bottle to really catch somebody picking their nose yeah. in a photo. Usually people are doing it on purpose as, as a joke, as a goof. Right. But this is a this is a caught in the wild. Wow. Make a wish, everybody. Okay. Opening <laughs> presents or something. Um, Amber sent this one in. Said I worked at a visiting professor at a small college. A student newspaper ran an article to commemorate it. And the photographer must have hated me because this is one of the worst pictures I've ever taken. Um, not exactly a dynamic a picture of a dynamic engaging in structure, more like I'm considering spitting on the class. So <laughs> this this was in the news. I mean, I don't think it looks that bad, but I could I see what she says. Yeah. I see what she means after she describes it like that. Yeah. Who, yeah. who doesn't kinda like looks, a celebrity plot? Yeah. What yeah. kind of looks like? Oh, kind of looks like she's smelling something bad right there. Like she yeah, just smelled yeah. something bad in the room. Yeah. Um, so we always like celebrity plunkets and Camden said, uh, went to see John Stossel speak in freshman year of college. After the speech, a man who looked exactly like a conspiracy theorist shoved a bunch of papers in Stossel's hands and said, this is my manuscript. You must read this. Then I jumped in and said, I'd like my picture with you at an event where I don't think he was expected to take photos with people. <laughs> There's an ambush, John Stossel. 
Stossled. Um, he got he got stossled right there. That's that's called yeah. getting stossled. Yeah, he got stossled hard. Yeah, look at his eyebrows. They're like, okay, we done. Yep. Uh, Braden, we we talked about the world's uh, the the yes. uh, colossal colon. This is at the Indiana State Fair in 2008. Um, Hillary, this is their second day at Hillary and Braden went to see the colossal colon. 14 years later, still happily married, and they said this might be a colon plunket. So yeah, I think it's definitely. I, I think agree it's our, with that. It's our first colon plunket of all time. Congratulations, <laughs> Jonathan. Jonathan was on a local Saturday morning show and he said my sideburns were inspired by vanilla ice, I think. And uh, then he sent the the, uh, the larger picture and I think it's even more terrifying. Uh, oh, no, he didn't. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry, but this is a, a local show hosted by a clown. So, oh, um, so there's a clown interviewing him right now. Yes, right there. there was. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Ruby said this is the worst photo of my husband, John and dog, Judy. He looks high, but isn't. I, we love animal plunkets. So, I mean, yeah. that, that dog, that's a full-on dog plunket right there. And I, oh, that, oh, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. dog looks hideous right there. He probably doesn't always look like that. But Well, Marty occasionally gets part of his his um, his um upper lip tucked into his bottom one, and it kind of makes that effect. Okay. I call him the, uh, when that happens, I call him the partial tucker band. Okay. He's partially tucked. Partially tucked, um, the partial tucker band. Got it. We don't often get the video plunkets, but Samantha uh, was with her uh, fiance. Oops, I'm going backwards. Samantha was with her fiance, and um, so the fian she had a little too much to drink. Fiance, oh, there's the uh, there's the clown. That oh wait, wait, let's see. Oh, they're right there. Yeah, okay, there's the All clown. Right. Yeah, sorry, I missed it. <laughs> so Samantha's uh, fiance said she sort of passed out. She's obliterated on the couch, and her fiance sang a Quiznos jingle while she was uh, <laughs> asleep. I guess so. Here okay. we go. All right. We love the socks because they are good to us. The quiz no socks. They are crunchy. They are tasty. Guys, where you them? Okay. So <laughs> the quiz no subs, they're crazy. They're crunchy. Cause I don't know if I've ever heard that song before, but I, don't I want to hear it. Yeah, it might have been those two little like chinchilla weird creatures when they're trying oh, to have like a right. viral campaign. I remember I that. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So was she actually singing that or was the thumb moving her mouth for her? I couldn't tell if she I was assume singing so, it. Or... I assume that was Samantha's singing voice. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Report yeah. back. I couldn't tell. Uh, two, two more. Uh, Spencer said that was 2003. It was my eighth grade yearbook photo and I was told to smile. <laughs> Nailed it. With a, so, with, a, with a kiss shirt too. Yeah. Yep. You could tell it's a kiss shirt. <laughs> And finally, this is this is sent in by Hayden. This isn't me. It's my cousin's kid, and it's one of the finest photographs ever taken. And I have to agree <laughs> that <laughs> this is one of the finest photographs ever taken of Hayden, Hayden's cousin's kid. It, it, and, it uh, looks like he's about to blow. Like any second, he's and, just about to just like explode. The tick about to pop. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's a thin <laughs> mint away from <laughs> a comic book Joe, villain. Yeah. Uh, Joe, can you add 619 2010 as a uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm celebrating hop- Hayden's cousin's kids' Plunkett's hop- anniversary? Hopping on the calendar now. Yes, All add right. that one right now. All right. And those were the, the submitted Plunkett's. Of course, if you want to send us your unintentionally unflattering photos, or videos of you, your loved ones, or your pets, send them to info at foundfootagefest.com. Now, now on to the main event. The Hold main on. Course. Hay- Hayden's Cousins Kids Plunkett. Will we know what that means on June 19th? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yes. The moment we've all been waiting for. Steve's treasure trove Discovered. of Plunkett's. This is like Al Capone's vault here. I mean, this we is. Found, yeah. I, I hope it lives up to the hype. Um but, you know, and I've realized by looking at not only the my plunkets, but the people that send in, there's a number of different reoccurring themes that go in. Um, hold on, let me see if I can set this up. So, like, number one is, can you see that? Yeah. It's yeah. yearbook photos. And, like, this one, what I think makes it a plunket is that my parents decided not to do my hair. I'm assuming, like, it's just, just bedhead. And, like, you just get up <laughs> Wait, and they're like, oh. Can you zoom in a little bit? I want to. Oh. I want to see some details. Or is that is that a big ask? 
But oh, there we oh. go. Oh, yeah, that is bedhead. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, just look at this area. I don't know if you can see where my uh, cursor is, but just sticking yeah. straight out. Like, how, how is I've that got even like possible? long hair back here. I don't know, <laughs> but I was thrilled. So I didn't matter. I was like, I oh, put a camera in front of me. But yeah, I look great. Uh, I, you know, I'm sure I was going with a spiked hair at that point and just not done at all. And I was probably... going to say one thing about you, too, is that you love a camera on you. You love getting your photo taken, don't you? Like, that's why you have I, so many great plunkets because you I, love I, being... I certainly did. I certainly yeah. did. Not anymore? Uh, no, not as much. Okay. Um, right. Here off is to, a, me, Off to a good start. Okay. And this was like we were doing, I think it was a holiday party when I interned at uh, Conan. And then you, go, you zoom in and just look at that face. It's like, oh, I don't know what I what was. Kind of an Elvis lip curl going on? Yeah, but not purposefully. Okay. Um, I, th I thought you were doing a bit there, but like, wait a second. So it, it almost looks like, you know, sometimes like stroke victims will have like half of their face will be uh, paralyzed. It kind of looks like that. Did you, yes. did you possibly have a stroke? No, no. Um, I, what I think, what I think was happening and it happens to me a lot. This is one of the things I've learned by looking at my plunkets is a lot of times I am trying to talk um, mm, while yeah. doing it. It's a huge mistake. Mm -hmm. It's a huge, huge mm -hmm. mistake. Here, here's another one where I'm, trying to talk and it just doesn't work out well for me and then the other thing i like about this photo is the background is <laughs> nothing but uh porta potty <laughs> yeah and then my friend i don't know if you can see my friend uh my college friend sherry she just doesn't even look like she's in the photo at all she's no. just out on it she's somewhere so felt, else yeah i felt like there was a number of uh uh Plunkett-esque moments in that photo. A lot of headroom in that photo. A lot yeah, of a lot of a lot of headroom. But framing is another big um, issue. Um, mm -hmm. Well, because we these to... are all analog cameras too, right? Like this is like yeah. Pretty, like everybody got good at photography once once cell phone cameras came along. But like yeah. before that, everybody sucked at photography. Well, not only that, but like here in this one, I think part of the problem was you know what would happen is someone would see you and then they'd be like, hey, quickly take a photo. But you wouldn't. Not everyone would be on board for it. So like, here's my dad, my mother, and myself. And if you just, you know, we just don't seem like we're ready. It wasn't like, I'm sure like the person said it like moments before, but as you zoom in, it's like, it's like my face, my mom's face. My dad seems the most ready for it, but yeah, someone was like, oh, that's a beautiful backdrop, which, you know, did gets lost in the, uh, gets blown out, but yeah. But it's like almost like one of those awkward family photos where like everybody's like posed to the side, like yeah, facing yeah, that yeah. way. You're not facing the camera; you're facing like to the side and looking. Yeah. Uh, and so I got one. another. It, look, it looks like it looked like you got stossled in that one, actually. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that might have been the case. Here's another one with my family. This was like you know one of those photo booths where they had the props. <laughs> wait, wait! You got grid all over it. You, you got oh. your dad's covered. Yeah, up. yeah. Get the grid out of there. Better. No, oh, there we go. All right, there we go. Oh, oh, no, okay, there we go. <laughs> so this is one of those, but it was in the, it was one of those photo booths where you have it, but it's in the middle, so like no one knew the photo was going to happen. <laughs> so my mom's leaving the frame. I've got a chicken with a helmet. Like, I'm not sure what's going on. And my sister Mary, just not, you know, no one's paying attention to the camera, so it's an inadvertent <laughs> plunket in my mind. And so like, especially, the, for, especially for my poor mother. But then like the photo booth like spit that out. And then yep. uh, you were like, hey, I'm going to hold out of this forever. And oh, then you wait, put wait, in that wait, storage wait, wait, locker wait. for 15 years. Right? <laughs> we're, 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 we're hanging on to that. Well, speaking of keeping on, you know, uh, the storage locker for 15 years. Um, you, we talked about celebrity plunkets earlier. This one's finally a good shot of me. And poor uh, Omar Epps <laughs> gets. <laughs> oh, sorry. I shoved it on the wrong side. Uh, Let me move uh, her over. Let's see it. Yeah. Oh, there, there he is. Yeah. yeah. So oh, like, that's, <laughs> that's not good. Oh, that's not good. yeah. You don't look that bad. You, I mean, you kind of no. look thumb like with a no, no. You have more of a chiseled yeah, uh, chin at that good. point. Yeah. yeah was, can yeah, you was, zoom in? Zoom in on Omar Epps. Can you please? Oh, the poor guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like, know. He's like, yeah. you know, that's, <laughs> that's the name of this episode. Zoom in on Omar Epps. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a talk show. <laughs> Poor Omar Epps was just, you know, end of a long day of work. And I was like, hey, man, I don't know. I think you're, I'm sure he's probably leaving like the next day. Still, yeah. as I wouldn't have asked for. Mind a photo? <laughs> Here's another one. Some of them I think are just fashion plunkets. I've got a couple of those. This is one of them where they were giving out free bucket hats at the Red Sox game. <laughs> and I, I also <laughs> like the name of this photo is plunk.jpg. <laughs> yeah, no, we got a. 
We got a lot of those. <laughs> We're giving up free bucket hats at the Red Sox. <laughs> zoom in, <laughs> zoom in on you. There couldn't be a more Boston thing yeah. since in the world. And how drunk are you there? You're like, you, uh, be- you know, I. You know, probably not as drunk as I want to be because beers are expensive there. So okay, there's no way. True. Yeah, no, no it, way it looks great money. on you. It looks I great just, on you. I think I even realized then that, you know, this wasn't going to be good. So it's like, this is one of the half hearted ones of like, oh yeah. boy, we've, we've, we've made a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll Whew. just give you one or one or two more. Yes. Um, Keep it coming. Oh. <laughs> this next one. Hold on. Do you have any more it. Omar Epps uh, Plunkets? I want more <laughs> Omar Epps Plunkets. I will, I will take a look. This one you might like, though. I got, I tell you what, I got Andy Richter. Poor Andy Richter. Oh. Let me see if we can find him. It's, he's buried here. Hold on. <laughs> I, just, I just saw him. Can you see it? No, I just love yep. how, like, yeah. It was up for a second. It's the most gritted thing we've ever shown on this show, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, well, <laughs> guys, once again, I'm just buried in plunkets trying to figure out where the heck. I mean, this segment is a plunket. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Show us your grid. Show us your grid. All right. I'm going to cut out of that one because I still can't find it. Uh, But I will go to this other one instead. And this one I will make sure is in the right place. And I think you guys will like this one. This is once again, this uh, I've got to go down with my (laughs) church group to uh, Orlando. I was thrilled, decided a fanny pack, short shorts. You know, (laughs) this was like my coolest outfit. It matched. Oh, I remember it so well. Just being so proud of myself. Look at that pose, too. Zoom in. Oh, Zoom in. Like, just thrilled with myself. <laughs> is, that that. Strauss <laughs> is that a Carl Strauss hat? Is that Carl Strauss hat? Baby Epcot Strauss. Center. Oh, yeah. baby, baby Strauss. Strauss. <laughs> okay. You you know what? You're very Mark Huntsman in this. You're so Huntsman. Oh, like, you're, you're five Huntsman. Mickeys. I would have yeah. definitely given it five Mickeys. Five Mickeys for sure. Um, <laughs> all right. We got one more. Fanny Pack Short Shorts is the name of that JPEG. <laughs> all right. Hold on one second. Let's see. <laughs> Let me see if there's one I could end on. Grid jet uh, uh, JP. <laughs> oh boy. One more. We're gonna go with one more. Yeah, we're gonna go with one more. Okay. Yes. Uh, let me see what this one is. This is a, a plunket on my brother, but I think it's worth showing. Sell him out. Yeah. Oh yeah. Without a doubt, he'd love yeah. it. Not really, but um, he watches the show, right? All the time, big time. Uh huh. <laughs> so this one right here. And this is just like sometimes the fashion changes <laughs> and oh, everything man. like that. But but boy, my poor brother, like my mom, I don't he was the oldest. And like, I don't think my mom ever had an idea of what fashion was even when she was young. <laughs> he gets just crushed. Zoom in. He, he's Zoom at the in. cusp of it. And so by the time he would go to school and get made fun of is the only reason I get dressed worse. Yeah, uh, but he would genuinely. He's still scarred by it. Like you know, when we get together, he's scarred oh, by like a, a lot of a these... young Stephen Hawking or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Mean, he's he went full Urkel. Like that's full Urkel at that point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, those glasses. All he needs is the tape between the glasses and the, and a pocket fenders. protector. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. yeah. That so is... there's some more. I'm sorry I wasn't more organized with my. Uh, we wouldn't expect anything yeah. less. I mean, I know um, you're. So okay, but you have more. So we'll open it up. If if uh viewer if Melinda's out there, if you have some plunkets, send it to us. Info at foundfootagefest.com. This is one of my f- favorite segments of all time. Unfortunately, like we ran out of plunkets. I only had two plunkets. Nick, do you have any new plunkets since uh not any new all, ones? I all your photos digging. look great. They all look yeah, great. Yeah, they're all send- they're all uh yeah. yeah. I mean, get, they're all give, great. Give me access to your uh, photos, can you? I'd like Absolutely. to take a look. Yeah. I'd like to take a look at all of them. And George, do you have any uh, hideous photos that have been taken? I, recently? I'm out. Yeah. All yeah. right. Um, all right. Well, as is tradition, after we finished up Plunkets in uh, Quarantine Classics, we would always finish up with a game called. There's your Andy Plunkett. Sorry. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh, there <laughs> wait, it wait, is. Wait, wait. I just what didn't want to disappoint anybody. Oh, completely really close. Yeah. Oh, you got really it. Yeah, yeah. All yeah, right. Yeah. There it is. So there, there yeah. we go. Wait, wait, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Yeah. Yeah. Poor guy. That, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's not good. Yeah. No. You, well, you have that effect on people. Like if you touch them, like yeah, Omar they, Epps, if you touch them, they turn plunkety. Yeah. yeah. And then it, you can also just see it's like not a full smile. He's just like, oh, I'm doing this. So not only that, you can see that he's not happy about it. And exactly. Then, yeah. Yeah. Steve he's is like, King Plunkett. He he yeah. touches somebody and they turn into Plunkett. Yes, exactly. He's the King Midas of Plunkets. Can yeah. I give you or, one more? I'm sorry. It's I like know the I'm dead zone. <laughs> it's like I, a, just, 
I just yeah. found one of my brother that I wanted to show because I, I know it's not going to make sense later. But remember, I told you, who wears a Scottish tam? Like you know, like <laughs> like I've never I seen. Mean, it. First of all, you can Urkel talk about does. Urkel does. Urkel Rod, does. Rodney yes, Dangerfield does. and yeah. uh, yeah. Caddyshack. Like, the, the the framing alone is terrible. I'm wearing my underoos, uh, you know. But yeah, if it oh. pushes him in, my poor brother, oh, and a Scottish what? Tim. Did, was that your mom's idea? I don't. Or I she just like put on the Scottish Tim. Is it yeah. called Tim? Yeah. It's the AM, yeah. The direction uh, of the photos. Can you get a shot of the chest of drawers? And it's yeah. people are in it. That's fine too. All right. Sorry. That was it. There was a couple more that I wanted to show. So good. Well, as is tradition, we got to finish that up with a little game called Which Thumb is Steve? All right. So this is the game where I show you a picture of two thumbs. All right. And two different thumbs. But you have to tell me which of those thumbs is Steve. All right. Does that make sense? You guys got it? Mm -hmm. All right. Here we go. Here's the first thumb. There's your first thumb. All right. And here's your second thumb. All right. We got two thumbs <laughs> here. Which thumb is Steve? Trick question. Both thumbs are Steve. Okay. George? I'm going to go with the one on the right because I don't see Steve wearing a tank top. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Steve, do you ever wear tank tops? No, not 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 if it could be avoided. Have so you far, ever been avoided? Have you ever worn one before? Yeah, like for basketball and things like that when I was oh, younger. You okay. Know. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You should. Uh, okay. Well. All right. Let's take a look. The answer is that one. Ah, that's the thumb. Yeah. That's Steve. That's how you play. George Which thumb it. is Steve? Ah, uh, quarantine classics coming up on two years now. Yeah, like I know. Years, it's a good exactly anniversary. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah. Well, we got time, I think, maybe just for one quick cyber video. So let's uh, roll the intro for that. George, what do you have to show us? Well, most cyber videos we watch are from YouTube, but Pond5 is a company that licenses stock footage for TV or movies or internet video. And you watch the clips online and there's a watermark in the center and Big letters, Pond5, but if you, you can pay $70 and then use it in your uh, in your video. So this week I looked up um, the term man dancing, and here are some of the things I, I found on just, <laughs> just the first page. This is a uh, senior adult man wearing pink helmet and dancing. Um, okay. I, I'm going to say this. I don't think he's dancing. He's no, he's running. He's running for his life. Right. But he looks okay about it. Um, and then the next one I just found was cheerful old man dancing in the kitchen. <laughs> and the thing is, the, the set is what gets me. It looks like an Ikea showroom. Yeah. Yeah, it does. He doesn't look that cheerful either. He just kind of looks uh, nonplussed. <laughs> but everything changed when I saw this. This is cheerful and happy young man with long hair actively dancing while walking down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, walking down. Oh, yes. a tracking shot on this one. I mean, somebody specifically needed the walking down part. Right. So I knew I had to do something with that. All right. Yeah. So I just made, I had to make a commercial around that. Oh, good. All right. Despondency. Melancholy. Thesaurus dependency. But it doesn't have to be like this. Ask your doctor or pharmacist if a stare is right for you. A stare is a quick release capsule that, when taken as directed, makes you dance. A stare stimulates the motor cortex system to initiate boogieing almost immediately. A stare does not cure depression, but it does make the people around you think you're happy. And really, isn't that what society needs to function? A stare works by moonwalking across the surface of the occipital lobe of the brain. Side effects include sweating, joint pain, and the hustle. Why fall into despair when you can dance there with one tablet of a stare? A stare. Get down when you get down. <laughs> Wow, that's so good. Nice work. I'm I like sold. this new Pond 5 segment a lot. I hope we do it every week. You, I hope you do it every week. 
you know what you know what you got to do is make a make a dating video using all pond fives like who is george you know and then mm. it's like uh, or, or what is a date you know like you know you'd like do a dating video with all pond fives can you do that for next week ne- next week i'll look up creep and see if i can get stuff from that yeah. yeah 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 oh, yeah all right sure oh man all right i like this new I- bit so I think we're going to cut several videos short, but I will just say that um, next week I'm going to play the not only the greatest greatest cyber cyber video that has ever been played, but perhaps the greatest VHS clip of all time. It has everything. everything Did we find this, or is this a YouTube video? It, it's um it was an Instagram video, but it comes from a VHS tape, so it kind of straddles the line. I was going to put it in cyber videos and. Uh, I'm just teasing that next week, prepare to be blown away. Okay. All right. That's all, that's all I'm going to say. Um, all right. Are we wrapping up here? Yeah, I think we got to wrap up. We okay. uh, mentioned we're doing unboxings uh, starting on Sunday for $5 and up patrons at patreon.com slash found footage festival. Uh, we're going to open like four or five boxes every week and see what's inside. So join us and watch along with us on our we're, Patreon. We're competing against 60 minutes every Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and we're going to kick their fucking asses. I can't wait to see the nails. <laughs> uh, hey, Life on the Farm, the, the movie that the Melinda's fun- funded, it won the Milwaukee Film Festival Jury Award. So, like, look at that. Because of the Melinda's, we all put our heart, hard-earned money into that. And uh, look at that. We, got, we, we have a, a major award. We have a trophy now. So Yeah, and we'll, uh, we'll stay tuned. We're hoping it gets to play more film festivals and uh, wherever you are. And then eventually uh, we'll be released. Well, uh, well now it's getting yeah. asked. It's being asked to be in more film festivals right. now that it won that one. So now we're getting into more film festivals. So hopefully it comes close to uh, Melinda's who have uh, given money to uh, Life on the Farm. Stay tuned. Um, we got a new bastard tapes up. It's TV uh, cash ins part two. Uh, listen, uh, go find that wherever podcasts are sold. Uh, what else we got? Uh, I, the toe tapping tournament. We're, so, you know, we had a big tournament of uh, jingles from our best commercials. Um, the neat Pete shuffle one. We're going to take our top four jingles and put them up against skip Alzheimer his wife, Katrina, from the AV Geeks, they do old educational films and hygiene movies. We are going toe to toe once again to see who comes out on top. The stakes couldn't be higher. We're hoping to win a thrift store painting of a clown pilgrim at Thanksgiving from Skip. Um, he won a club painting from us last year. So we're out and, for revenge. We and, and if, if we lose, he has this like really like intricate thing where we have to serve him dinner as clowns or something like that. We'll, yeah. we'll clear it all up with the, it, it, at the thing. So George, what do we got come up for Saturday, Saturday morning cartoons this Saturday? It's an, a super obscure um, cartoon sent, suggested to us by Matthew Gastra. I had to look that up just now, um, but it is, <laughs> it is called Power Masters and none of us had heard of it and almost no one has heard of it. It was a wild, it's a wild ride. It, it barely exists, but it like, it blew my mind. Like, I loved it. Um, also, big, huge news. This Friday, Songerthon is finally happening. This has been like eight m- months in the, in, the, in the making. Oh, the nice graphic. Songerthon, 13 hours of the world's worst internet comedian. Friday, yeah, 9 a.m. We're waking up. We're setting our alarms for this, actually. Got to get there at 7 to start doing tech tests. So it's going to be a long, long day. And the only thing making this worth, worthwhile is that it's going to be for charity. We're going to have a little tip jar set up. And uh, donating money to a women's charity in Georgia, where Songer is from. So join us, watch, see how much you can get through. Check in with us, make sure we're still uh, alive and standing. We'll be going for uh, it's gonna all be day, tough. all yeah, night. And, and Tim from Bastard Tapes is joining us because he's really the Songer expert. And uh, yeah, I so think we'll... Mike Sachs is going to call in. Kurt Brownholder, who's a professional comedian and an actor, commented on our Instagram post about it. So I'd like to get his take on. Songer's you know, the, comedy uh, stylings. Erica and Michael are going to swing by their song or haters and they might mm. swing by and and, uh, and uh, watch with us for a little while. And uh, so, yeah, we got a big day planned. OK, it's going to be good. Uh, we're going to be spending the rest of the, this week prepping for that. So wish us luck. What are we going to go out on tonight? We're going to go out on uh, another Jim's Coins in Hilldale uh, remix. So let me just play real quick, real quick. Let me just play. The Jim's Coins. Have you guys heard this song before? Here it is. This is from Madison, Wisconsin. This is a, a jingle for a coin shop. Jim's Coins in Hilda. Gold.
All right, so that, that's the jingle. And so we sent that out to Melinda Mixers. They heated our call and they made some great remixes. Uh, Joe, Joe made this one. Um, he said, and this is what his email said. He said, I was so loaded up on drugs when I made this, <laughs> which is a great start. <laughs> uh-huh. I was so loaded up on drugs when I made this. I can't even remember it. I like to imagine Jim went through a psychedelic period in the 60s and his commercials might have looked a little something like this. So that's what we're going out on. Um, if we had been prepared, here's the thing. We could have done better. We got a big update on Jim's coins uh, about who Jim is in the photo and uh, who sung the jingle. And uh, we might even be in touch with a certain Jim from Jim's coins. And he's so, not mad. And he's not mad. Uh, that's right. So we'll have the full report next week. And we'll be right <laughs> back right after that. Uh, check out Ear Candy at OsakaPopStar.com and let me know what you think of the new song Lost and Found. Uh, until then, my nose isn't full of yuck anymore. Nobody needs that much Dr. Pepper. Jim's Coins in Hilda. 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 Madison. When we return, Dr. Selner will complete the bunion surgery. Yes, those are his pajamas he's wearing. All right, I gotta go. That's all. That's it. Let me see that one. Rocks are done. Gotta sleep. Bye. That's it. That it done. We did our best. If we'd been prepared, we could have done better. What do you think about Bibra? About what? In a my not in for yuck anymore. Ooh. That's all I'm doing. Sure you don't have a good day. Sizzler. Tinkerbell. We'll be right back right after that. Good luck from all of us at Hagen. And Kurt Polster, the real great guy. Nice, nice. Goodbye. Jim's coins in Hilda.